Hi AP World students, this is Mrs. Longnecker and today I want to share a little bit with you about the textbook that you're going to be reading this year. Here's what it looks like. Ways of the World by Robert Strayer, first edition. Uh, this textbook we've had for a number of years in AP World history and it's a pretty good book. There are books that might be a little bit better, there are definitely books out there that are worse, but this is a pretty good book for our class in particular. One of the reasons that we selected this book for Olympia High School is that it does a good job of covering the content and hitting the course themes. We're going to be talking about course themes in a video next week, so stay tuned for that. But this book does a great job of addressing course themes throughout its focus on history. Now, that being said, is it a perfect book? No. There are some things about it that people have mentioned to us over the years that I want to address really quickly in this video. Number one, it's a textbook. So it reads like a textbook. It's not going to be the most exciting book that you read in sophomore year of high school. It's a little dry. And so we're going to give you a lot of tools and strategies for how to address that dryness and to make the most of your reading, to get something out of it so that it doesn't just feel like a chore. That being said, it will sometimes feel like a chore, and I'm sorry, there really was no other way around it to get you the content that we needed. Second thing that we hear a lot from people is this textbook's biased, and we've been hearing a lot about that um, it, from different people over especially the last couple of years. Our textbooks are so biased, and especially as history teachers, we hear that a ton. And here's what I would say really briefly about that. Number one, yep, it is. Do you want to know how I know this textbook's biased? Right here at the bottom. It says, written by Robert Strayer. It means that this textbook was written by a person, and he's got biases. And there's a couple of biases I want to be really upfront about that I've noticed in this textbook, but certainly you may discover others as we go through your reading this year. Number one, um, it's very clear that Robert Strayer is um, expecting that you will have read the whole book. He's going to assume a lot of knowledge from you. He's going to assume you know what he's talking about. He will make reference to events or details that sometimes were mentioned in earlier parts of the text. So when I know that that's coming, I I will do my best to help you make those connections between parts that either you have read or parts that we had to skip over for time reasons and the fact that the book doesn't exactly match the time frame of our course to try and help fill in some of those gaps. The second bias that I've been hearing a lot from students over the years is that Robert Strayer presents religion, many religions, in a way that is concerning or even offensive to people who are followers of that religious tradition. And I'm not going to defend Robert Strayer because I'm not him. I didn't write the book. I don't know exactly everything that went into writing it. But in terms of as being someone who has read multiple textbooks, what I would say is that I think that Strayer defers to a non-religious interpretation of religious activities. So when you read about different religious observances or beliefs or practices, it's being presented by someone who is not a follower of that religious tradition. So if you are a person who has as a faith tradition that's important to you, he's probably going to misrepresent some of the things that you believe or practice um, because he's not coming from a place of deep familiarity with all of those things. He is presenting a commonly accepted view of those traditions by non-religious historians, um, but if there is something about the way he presents a religious tradition that we know to be offensive to people of that tradition, we as your teachers will try and counter that as best we can and present to you a more nuanced view of that. And if there's something that we miss, feel free to let us know so that we can present a broader, more nuanced view of history. 
Lastly, it's worth noting that this will not be our only source for historical information. We will be drawing on outside sources, both primary sources written during the time period that we're studying, and secondary sources, other historians and scholars doing work on these same topics, with the hope of not countering a bias necessarily, but of presenting multiple perspectives on different historical topics. Um, and helping you to see that every source is going to have its own biases and perspectives. And by bringing lots of sources together, we can get a better and more well-rounded understanding of the story of history. As always, if you have any questions about what you're reading, whether it's a, I don't understand this question or a, I think this is wrong question, please ask them either directly or in a class setting so that we can help work through those things and help you better understand what you're learning about this year. I look forward to getting started with our readings and um, with the learning that we're going to be doing together in AP World History, and I'm glad that you're along for the ride. Have a good one, everybody.